John, any ladders to move? Nah, I already did, don't worry. All right, fantastic. So, hello everyone, <laughs> welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons, now certified 100% ladder free. And we're going to be continuing on with our Icewind Dale campaign. If you haven't seen the first and second episode of the campaign, I thoroughly recommend you go and watch those first. You get to see our party step out on their initial adventures in the frozen tundra of Icewind Dale. Now, last session, we had a little bit of, I suppose you'd call it summary justice, dished out by Cat, although who seemingly uses a somewhat loose definition of the term justice, <laughs> as the party went and recovered a set of iron ingots that some dwarves had lost when ambushed by a yeti that a group of goblins had found. The party led the goblins back to the gates of Bryn Shander, the town that they're staying in, and then told the guards to, uh, to let loose some crossbow bolts. So they successfully recovered and got payment for their deeds, to which I believe we had all sorts of different actions. I believe there was some scurrying away and hiding it under the floorboards to uh to some incredible gambling done by Darmok, which was truly something special however the party now has simply been recovering in the north look tavern in which they stay for a little while now a couple of days have passed really with all of you just kind of shaking off the wounds and the aches of what is a fairly new experience and sort of adventuring and combat to all of you however we did have Izar Sol choose to stay at somewhat of a more reputable establishment. However, for the purposes of narrative cohesion, we'll say that you've been <laughs> checking in every day with your companions in the North Look, and that's where we'll start. You guys have eaten breakfast. It's just kind of approaching 10 or 11 in the morning as you all sit around in the North Look Tavern, just recuperating, relaxing, and chatting with Scram Sacks. So, who would like to kick us off? What would you be doing? There is no poker on yet, Darmok, by the way, so please... <laughs> Hold your money for wow. now. <laughs> Dorothea would be sitting a little bit restless. You said it's been a few days now, right? Yeah, it's been two days have passed since okay. the, like two whole days. So this is the start of the third day since your encounter uh, searching for the ingots. Okay, so she's kind of just sitting there getting a little antsy, fidgeting with something. And she'll turn to the group and say, what's taking her so long? I mean, surely we should have heard something by now. Hey. With divine providence... <laughs> the door swings open to the Northlook Tavern, and a guard sergeant, a portly man dressed in heavier armor than many of the regular guardsmen, strides in, his belly preceding him, and he gives a quick scan, noticing it's just you lot and Scramsacks in there, as well as a couple of elderly regulars eating their breakfast. So he glances straight towards you and he goes, Oh, I imagine you're the lot who had the deal with the commander? Yes, Is that yes, correct? That's us. Wonderful. My name's Sergeant Auric, and uh, I've been sent to instruct you that while the commander is away on certain businesses, she told me to pass on a message that her intelligence network has reported back that the man you're looking for is in East Haven. East Haven? Oh. Yeah, it's a town, unsurprisingly, to the east. <laughs> well, I'm not too familiar with that <clears throat> one. Any of you? Have I been to East Haven? I don't think so. Uh, it's uh, East Haven is well. You would you would know a little bit about it, Fletch. You would know that East Haven is the busiest port of Ten Towns until recently, where of course the endless winter has frozen the water, and you probably would have heard some rumblings of discontent that a lot of trade has kind of been shut down by the port being shut down in essence. But East Haven is known as a little bit of a, a little bit of an outlaws town, but that has kind of diminished as time's gone on. It was originally founded by smugglers and thieves, but these days it serves as one of the livelier and one of the busier trade-wise towns of Ten Towns. Okay. And uh, what is this uh, person's name that we should be looking for? With this, the guard huffing and puffing, scurries in his sack for a little bit and pulls out a bit of parchment and goes, uh, the fellow's name is Rinaldo. Apparently he's a bardic sort. Never had much time for them myself. And you'll find him at the White Lady Inn in East Haven. It's a nice inn, that one. I've been to it myself. It's, uh, could be worse, could be the wet trout. I'd avoid there if I was you. <laughs> the wet trout. <laughs> oh, yes, the wet trout. It's, uh, quite a disgusting establishment, really. Full of hooligans and knaves. Good to know. <clears throat> Sergeant Oric, if you've uh, been to East Haven, could you tell us, is the journey fine or anything we should be on the lookout for? Well, 
I'm afraid to say Blizzard's kicking up today. So, well, you're going to have to sort your own travel out. Don't say anything about that here. But honestly, you can get there in half a day. As long as you're on horseback, it's all right. I guess that means we're going to have to find some horses then. Because if Darmark has any money to rent any. <laughs> I don't know how many spare horses you're going to be finding uh, around here. My recommendation is chat to the caravans. They're always looking for, you know, tit for tat. Groups such as yourselves, and he kind of gestures around loosely at your equipment strewn about you. He goes, chances are in these conditions. And he sort of thumbs a paw at the window. And now you have a look out of it, you can see that his words are true and the blizzards are definitely kicking up. Outside is almost sort of painted in smears of dark and medium grays as little to no light is getting through. And you can see above the sort of uh, like tops of the roofs of houses that there is indeed just like snow squalls and blizzardic winds whipping past. Nice. In conditions like this, uh, I'd go check to the caravans. Right, well, thank you very much. Oh, that's all. I'll, uh, I'll leave you with this. And he pops down the note he was reading just on the counter next to the door where he came in. And quickly turns about heel and walks out the door. Seems like a nice enough guy. Yeah, very oh, nice. note. Um, da, da, da. I didn't actually write down the merchant's name. Uh, it's awkward. Okay. Uh, of note, um, we did kind of remove a bodyguard from a particular merchant. Torga. <laughs> perhaps she might Torgor. be looking for a replacement. Don't you think she'll be a little bit pissed to know that, uh, you she know? She doesn't need to know that it was us. I'm pretty sure people know by now it was us. I mean, we did tell the guard. Yes. So... Damn, podunk sure towns don't do know how to keep secrets. We, we could approach her and be like, well, you know, this, this lad was shite. We're much better, clearly, obviously. We can do it. Yeah, and, you know, we never know if maybe he was planning on murdering her, so we could have saved exactly. her. Exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Strike. I, I don't know if the uh, whole we are better than him is going to work, considering the fact that it was um, a one-on-five. Well, yeah. it was actually a one-on-three, but uh, I'd rather not bring that up. Sure. <laughs> I hope. With, with this, Scram Sykes kind of looks over to you, and he simply goes, Well, I'd sit. I'd go hang around the road to East Haven. It's called the East Way. It goes out the East Gate. Lots of East involved, but if you hang around the East Gate, you'll see caravanners and traders preparing their wagons to go. I just kick around there. That's what most people making the journey do. You can either cross their palms with a bit of silver, or you can just offer work for them. Either way is bound to work. Yeah, maybe we'll just hitch a ride with them. Good to me. Let's do it. Things All right. Scram On sucks. the way. Thank you for breakfast. Let's go. Thank you. Travel Lord. west. Well, make sure you drop by again when you're uh, back in Bridge Shander. It'd be nice to see what you've been up to. Oh, for sure. We'll come back. Hopefully, with no dragons. dragons. No. no. No, no dragons. No. Oh. All right. <laughs> we'll come back with plenty of adventure stories for you. Uh, sounds just good. All right. Well, oh well. Hi. <laughs> right, so you guys gonna east. make your way to the east gate so you right. you head through the town of Bryn Shander, just crossing mm -hmm. by the marketplace and taking the road east which does indeed lead to the gate and you can see there's almost like a like a staging area the east gate is surrounded by a lot of seemingly warehouse like buildings you can see most of them are boarded up and fastened shut in preparation for the averse weather conditions which are getting worse by the moment you're all having to wrap yourselves up in your furs and your cloaks quite tightly because the winds are picking up, but there is one wagon with a stout looking, it's hard to tell, but you, you would assume he was a halfling or a dwarf, a stout looking fellow packing it up. And he seems to be on his own as he is loading these huge cylindrical bundles of furs into the back of this waiting wagon that has a sled and dog team out the front of it with four great, huge looking husky sight beasts loading up the wagon. What would you like to do? You're right. They're not, they're not rugs, are they? <laughs> they're not rugs, are they? <laughs> Cylindrical make furs. Me a, make me a perception check. That's exactly where I went. We're screwed, man. We're screwed. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Uh, perception. Here we go. Huh. 
Damn it. <laughs> double ones. Double nat ones. ones. What? Oh my god. I double nat 20 last game. Yeah. Right. You can't really tell what they are. I mean, the light conditions are pretty bad, and you know, the, the blurring snow in front of your face. He's just loading bundles up. You can't really tell what they are. Well, in that case, I'll just look at Fletch and go, <sighs> all right. <laughs> we'll head towards right. the caravaner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you, you get closer to him and you do see that it is this. You're very relieved to see Dwarven fellow loading up these large bundles into the back of the wagon. And he seems to be heaving and hoeing with each one as the things are bigger than him, essentially, standing about four and a half feet tall and a few feet wide. But you do see that the wagon is plenty big and you figure that you could all definitely fit in the back of it were you to request such, essentially. <clears throat> uh, well, as he's loading this, I'll, I'll lean down and, and help him load some on and say, as I'm helping him, oh, hello, sir. Uh, myself and my party are looking to head out to East Haven if you happen to be making the journey. Well, at first he notices you helping him with the, uh, the furs, which, Craig, as you lift them up, you notice that these are unprocessed furs, you would say. They're kind of like pelts and the like, bundled and bound with rope. He so towards goes, oh, thank you kindly. They're killing my back. They're looking for passage to East Haven. Yes, Tell me, if you're... what's so urgent that you're traveling in these conditions? I'm only making the trip myself because I'm right by a deadline, but I really advise you all to stay inside today. The winds are fierce. Uh, we're, we're meeting with our, our contact over there just for some work we've got going on. All right, well, I can take a hint. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not subtle. <laughs> so, all right, well, and he kind of, you see now, he, he's wrapped to his nose and his eyes. You can just see this slit of, you know, weathered, very outdoorsy skin underneath. And he kind of casts a beady glance around all of you and he goes, all right, well, you look capable. So I say, more the better. As long as you got your own supplies and rations, I mean, it's a seven or eight hour trip. I wouldn't mind having you along, to be honest. The men say... Things come out of the snow, and it's like this. They say it's things she's sent to torment us. And I don't buy into any of that crap. I reckon it's kobolds and bandits. But you look like you can all deal with those. So, I think we have something mutually beneficial. That sounds good to me. Very good, and I'm gonna help him, like put the rest of the rugs in with that. Sure. So you guys uh, finish off helping him load the rugs into the back of the wagon and you kind of fashion them so there's almost like two benches of them going along the sides so you have someone to sit on during the journey. And as you're helping, the only thing he does is he does look up towards you, Darmok, and he goes, uh, I better clear this just in case the guards check or anything, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. None of you on the run, nothing illegal. No. 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 In fact, we just talked to the guards this morning. Oh, official business then. I'll I'll ask yes. no more. All right then, you can all load up. I'll be leading the dogs from the front, and well, find something to hold on to. It can get a bit bumpy. Before I wins. before I forget to ask, sir, your name. Oh, my name's Carlson. Carlson, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And what is your name? The name's Eddie. And Eddie. these are my companions. Yeah, I assume you all introduce yourself to Carlson. <laughs> yeah. right. always, that's always the awkward bit. 20 minutes of that. <laughs> he, kind of, he kind of soaks in your introductions and he goes, All right, well, glad to know the names of my traveling companions. I will make it clear, should we run into trouble, I will expect you to, you know, hold up your end of the bargain. Hopefully sure. there's nothing out there, but uh, some of the stories you hear are not so good. We're Thanks also us. in a D and D campaign, so I can't imagine that would go well. <laughs> Something will likely happen due to that. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't it be much entertainment otherwise? <laughs> All right. So load yourselves up in the back, and uh, well, we'll be off in just a moment. I load myself up. Um, in the back. I'm gonna go towards the like the outside of the caravan, just oh, to, like sitting uh, on the like the edge yeah, of the opening. The, kind of the edge of the opening, yeah. Cool. To try to block cool. some um, of the weather for the rest of my rest. Of the oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> so you're all kind of huddling in, and uh, you very quickly realize that it's not only the large bundles in here. There are piles of furs, so you kind of you know blanket yourself and cover yourself appropriately. And while as soon as the dog sled kicks into action, you can feel the lurch of movement 
take you out of Bryn Shanda and into the freezing tundra. And once you are there, it is certainly biting. I mean, this wagon, it's very obvious that this is Carlson's living. You know, this is something that he cares for a great deal, but it is also used a great deal. There are cracks in the wood and holes and little bits of disrepair in some of the canvas and the, the waxed hides plating the inside of the wagon where the biting wind does blow through and each one of them is like a dagger through you. It is freezing cold outside. You were to imagine that if you stepped out of this, you might be okay for 10 minutes, for 20 minutes, but you sure wouldn't see out the next hour. It is freezing cold out there. Even you, Darmok, are suffering in this cold, but doing what you can to shield your companions from the icy winds. Mm. The sled keeps lurching forwards, mostly drifting over smooth snow with the occasional bump, and it's really not too prohibitively disruptive. So that if any of you would like to do anything during this part of the journey, you're more than welcome to. We can't... Do the classic. Oh, okay. go ahead. I was going to say, we can't, like, you know, chat to Carlson or anything, right? No, oh, he's, he's like, completely he's separate. separated okay. from you by the edge of the wagon, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll just be nattering on about the things that have happened the past few days and how bored I've been the past two days not doing anything and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Every hour, I will be re-upping three cubic feet of my uh, clothing uh, using precipitation to make it warm. Okay, there you nice. Go. You occasionally notice, Justin, e even with your prestigitation and your warmed clothing, you are still cold. Oh, for sure. You occasionally notice Justin kind of mumbling something to himself, almost with a hint of desperation in his voice, and then you notice a waft of air move up him, and he seems to <laughs> relax a little bit after that. But... <laughs> Must have had beans for breakfast. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eddie would just be uh, pulling a small leather-bound book out of his thing and starting to read through it trying to figure out some more of this fun magical stuff and uh, probably right. playing with some amount of like I call it a snow globe in his in front of him he's probably just using the cantrip uh, uh, shape water just to <laughs> pass the time so to speak you keep having to recast your shape water as every time you just started like swirling it into a globe shape you notice the outsides beginning to freeze and crack over Jeez, you entertain cold. yourself enough so I, I will just keep a weather eye out. A weather eye out. Well, why didn't you make me a perception check staring out the okay. back of the wagon, Craig? I got a 19. Wow. So, well, with the 19, Fletch, you notice, is uh, not trying to relax or trying to sort of settle into the journey. He is keeping a staring gaze out the back of the wagon's opening. And Fletch, you're pretty confident with all your history of tracking and especially the landscape that you're in in the tundra. Nothing is following you. You're pretty sure of that. Okay. Okay. So, um, as your journey... Oh, yes. It's okay. No, it's okay. Go ahead, please. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to turn to uh, Izar and say, um, so, you know, you keep staying in that uh, fancy inn of yours, and, you know, why are you exactly in uh, Icewind Dale again? Yeah, it's cold. Uh, my, my my um my my mom uh, and my and my uh my my grandma, they uh, they sent me up here for some stupid prophecy reason. I, I'm the shining sun or some nonsense. Why is it so cold? I bet you could use a shining sun right about now, lad. <laughs> Absolutely. They they stay. Apparently, that's why. I, uh, I'm I'm the first um I'm I'm the first the first male. Uh, born, born technically to my uh, my line, so that's 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 you know that's a thing. So you're here to bring the warmth back. That's that's what they tell me. They might just be crazy old ladies. I don't know. I'm I'm just doing this because apparently without going up here, uh, I don't get all of my inheritance. So. Ooh, I. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. I, I love it. I love being around so, riffraff and scoundrels and street rats. It's great. What it's great. do you what do you have to do then to satisfy? A condition, or how, how does it work? Well, I was told um, that uh, that my my uh, family like made some deals with some unsavory types to have some wealth, and uh, and uh, I'm I'm supposed to like come here because uh, I'm like the the ending of that deal. I'm like the 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 final the, the final uh, uh, brokered part. I essentially, I just gotta, I gotta like help 
help this place not be frozen or something, I guess. I'm supposed to bring the sun. I don't know what it means. All right. But yeah, then apparently my family gets to keep the wealth uh, and they're no longer subservient to, to this um, um, uh, individual, let's say. All right. <sighs> Sounds like the worst contract ever. Yeah, well, I didn't even sign it. Yet I'm, I'm the one who has to pay for it. It's fantastic. I so actually nice. have... Sweater. I think I have a worse contract for... Uh, we're similar in that way. Uh, I'm also up here because I don't get my inheritance if I if I don't. <laughs> so. They're, just, they're hating on the rich kids. It's crazy. Uh, but I, I have to found a, find a trout. Like the fish. It has a ring. Oh, oh, that's so in much the easier. Winter? Oh, you yeah, think that's so? fantastic. It's yeah. probably just frozen frozen. somewhere. Mm. Of so all of... Just go around shooting fireballs out and... Should I catch fish? I, I, I can't cast anything like that. Uh, so... I'll, I'm planning to be here for quite a little bit. All right. Well, the well, sooner I can get out of this hellhole. We'll, we'll have better luck finding a fish uh, if you spend a little less time gambling there. Uh... Just saying. Darak looks away. <laughs> As Darmok mulls this ridiculous proposition, <laughs> all of a sudden the sled begins to halt quite swiftly, in fact, as it's almost like you're all jerked forwards as it stops and you hear the dogs out the front all barking and yelling their heads off at something. Without any words, you just hear three thuds on the side of the wagon, the front of the wagon where Carlson would be. And here, we've got something. I cast major. I, I, I jump out. <laughs> right. I also cast major. I cast Everybody cast major. <laughs> Wait. I don't want to die. I cast sanctuary on myself. All right. So you can cast all the spells you'd like <laughs> for now. We go so, outside. We're dead anyway. Darmok, so. you're <laughs> leading the way, we'll say, as you were so swift yeah. to jump out. And as you make your way around the side, you can see the dogs have veered off to the opposite side, almost as if they're trying to get away from something and still looking back and snarling and barking into the snow drifts in front of you. And eventually, as you step forward and make your way past Carlson, who's just staring out towards it, you can see a figure is there in the gale. At the distance you are, we'll say you're at the front of the wagon, just behind the sled. At the distance you are, it is little more than a blurred dark figure standing like a statue in the middle of the road. With this, Carlson looks at you and he goes, Oh, it's probably a bandit trying to hold us up. Might be a distraction, or might be they're going to pretend to need help. We can't go around, though. The snow's not packed on either side. We've got to go through. I think this is where it falls to use. Very so well. it's, it's still I'm, like a blizzard out, right? Yeah, it's absolutely snowstorming and galing around you. The wind is running right through you, mm. and it's limiting vis visibility to the point where you can yeah just see the dark, blurry figure standing still face on towards um, you. I am going to cast Thaumaturgy and Good. in a booming voice say, Who dares halt my progress? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this call rings out and you can see through the magically enhanced voice of Izai, you can see almost like the shockwave emanate throughout the snow falling down. To this, the figure standing face on twitches to a point where its arms are slightly wider out. And you can see it a little clearer, although it is still just a blurred figure to you. You notice that its left arm is missing, as though it's almost been cut off entirely just above the elbow. Not snow zombies, man, not snow and zombies. And you can see <laughs> its other right arm stretched out. All of a sudden, a dark shape falls from it. And you swear that the shape that just fell from its hand is connected by a chain or something similar. Come on, man. I hate I, it. Whatever it is, I hate I, I'm it. going up. I'm going to... You're going up? Behind me. Right. Behind I, me, I everyone. Will follow. Everybody follow? Following? Hesitantly. <laughs> All right. As you approach a few more steps, we'll say you're walking to the front of the sled now, the figure makes no response immediately. And you can see it a little bit clearer. You can actually begin to see some of its features. This is a human man. Missing an arm. Its face half blackened and 
bitten away by the frost, for he wears some ragged cloth trousers and nothing else. You can see the frost has entirely claimed parts of him, presumably his arm being one of them, as well as exposing one side of his ribs entirely as his skin is just blackened and twisted all over his malformed torso. He has a few strands of white hair dripping down from his face, but there is very little there, and in his face, as you get a little bit closer, you see the look of pure insanity. This man is enthralled, crazed. There is no edge of reason in his eyes whatsoever. You're standing... Eyes. Hello? Are they, uh, are they uh, interesting in any way? <laughs> uh, we eyes? shall put you on the map so you can place yourselves down. I would say, it's just for a reference, Darmok, I will put you down as you are about about there at the moment. Okay, thanks. Essentially, sure. are his eyes like blue? Yeah, I know what you're asking. Uh, make me a perception roll, Izar. Oh, gosh. A17. 17. Uh, no, his eyes do not appear to be glowing blue. However, he is very obviously unnaturally alive. A, a normal person would surely have expired by this point of damage. Uh, so upon seeing this, I would like to chuck a javelin at him. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> All right. Roll that. While everybody does that, of course we will roll initiative going okay, into it. that's fair. Uh, you can roll that to begin with, though, if you're doing it as kind of like a surprise action. Yes. And so we'll do that. All right. 16. So I, I shall open the turn time for you all. 16. Okay, you can, uh, you can roll your damage. And as the javelin sails through the air and lands squarely in this guy, it appears to simply pierce straight through him with no reaction whatsoever. And as he reaches up and snaps off the top of the javelin with this hand, which you can now see is holding this cruel, wicked flail of dark metal. We'll roll our turns. All right. I rolled roll a 10, by the way. Fantastic. Good job, John. <laughs> I just know people on the po audio podcast don't yep. know what we rolled. So. Oh, yeah. That I rolled very a six. True. I rolled a 16. 13 for me. I rolled a 12. And this dude rolled a 15. Okay, so. Okay, that is 7 plus 6 piercing. It's 13. Okay, so he takes 13 points slap. of piercing damage. It is. So he takes 13 points of piercing damage as your javelin slams straight through this body. And Darmok, it is now your normal go. <laughs> well, I'm I'm charging. All right. Uh, and Charge I have away. take out my longsword and I go for uh, a hit. Okay, make your attack. 16. 16. Oh, 14, Six sorry, 14. Oh, four 14 also hits. 14 okay. slash. Uh, four slashing damage. Okay, so with four points slashing damage, you do you cut across his torso, and it's like carving into dead flesh, essentially. It just peels away, and he seems to show no sign as he twitches and fixes his gaze towards you. And it's now the turn of our unusual friend, who is going to make an attack at you. He's going to take a step back, not enough to trigger an attack of opportunity, but takes sort of half a step back, get him some room, and then the arm with the flail is just going to start swinging wildly towards you. And that is going to be a 18. That hits. Okay, and that is going to be... Sorry, I don't have the damage automatically in here. Feels bad. Okay. That is going to be a... 11 points... <laughs> Ow. <laughs> 11 that max roll okay. damage. All right. And then he's going to take a swing at you once again on the backswing for an eight. That does not hit. So that one, you just managed to reach up in time and deflect it with your shield. And then he's going to take another swing at you with the flail. Good lord. Oh boy. For again, another eight. So this time you're much more prepared after taking such a heavy blow and you deflect it on its way back as well. And then he just stands sort of gibbering under his breath wildly and staring you in the face, Darmok. All right, Dorothy, you're up. I'm up. Uh, quick question. Channel Divinity. Yes. I want to try turn undead. Is that a, that's an action, right? As an action, I present my holy symbol or speaker prayer censoring the undead. I'm going to assume this fellow's undead, so I'm going to hold up my holy symbol of my god and tell it to go away. <laughs> What's the symbol? Right. My symbol is... Um, Crap, I had it written down somewhere. It's a... 
Du -du 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 -du. It's a horned unicorn, a symbol of the goddess Maliki. Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to sell it. Be gone, foul cretin, or whatever the heck I say. I don't know. Uh, basically, just telling it to push off. Um, uh, what's don't like Connor's face to this. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Probably not gonna work, but let's see. All right, so then, yeah, a turned creature, if it works, must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can. It has no effect. Shit. Great. Uh, anything else? No. I'm just gonna hang All out. All right. Fletch, you're up. Not uh, before before I move, can can I take a look around, like back to the cart and, and to the side? Is, is there anything else we could see in the in the blizzard? Sure. Uh, you can make me a perception roll. See if you can okay. reveal some more of your surroundings. And that one. No, it, it, you can barely see Darmok fighting this guy. It, it's imperviously just stormy with snow and ice. <clears throat> okay, I'll uh, I'll run up to join Darmok and swing with my uh, greatsword. Okay. It's a nat 20. Nice, hey! roll your damage. Very, very and nice. That is 10. Not bad at all. Okay, so you get a solid strike lunging with your greatsword and stabbing through this guy entirely and pulling it back out. And he seems to stagger a little bit, his body obviously suffering damage, but it's not like you get any reaction out of him. He's just gibbering to himself still. And that ends my turn. Okay. Eddie, you're up. Uh, take a measly step forward and shoot a fire bolt at this nice. weird-looking ice man. I rolled a 21. Yeah, that certainly hits. And... 10 damage. All right, again, you get a solid strike, and this time it sizzles and burns away part of his upper torso, and you oh, begin to see... Oh, no, that's two damage. I'm sorry. It tried to do the crit. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, that's that's two damage. Well, in that case, it doesn't sizzle too much, but it sizzles away <laughs> on his Light upper torso. smolder. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a minor smoldering. I was confused right. why it's two damage. Uh, anyway, yes, sorry, that's, right. uh, that's it for me. I'm going to move to this area. <laughs> Justin's first turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's leaving. <laughs> Can't believe this. Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Eldritch Blast. He did the thing. He's I doing the thing that warlocks do. Twen Yeet. Twenty-four certainly hits. Yeah. Nine force damage. Get it right. hitted. So your uh, your bolt slams into him. And again, just like blast, you actually hit where his arm is severed and blow off another chunk of flesh, exposing the upper bone underneath. Yuck. Anything else? Uh, other than like trying to keep my my salt my salt meat, gonna, gonna <laughs> pass that turn. Does it bleed when the arm blows off? Make me a Wait, perception I check. I probably wouldn't see from here. Hang on. Uh, eighteen. Yes, although its blood is almost viscous and half frozen, you assume. Ooh, okay, that's all I want all right. to know. Just technically alive. Darmok. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to try something new. I want to use my breath weapon. So, Ooh, uh, nice. I'm going to exhale in a 15 foot cone, uh, cold damage. They have to make a constitution saving throw. Okay, alrighty. Let's get that up. That is a 13. Does not. So, uh, it, the creature takes 2d6 damage on a failed save. Okay, you can roll your damage. Roll my damage. 10. All right, yeah, so uh, you just unleash this ice-cold breath, and you can see again it crystallizes and forms and shatters part of the torso away, and this guy is very obviously even closer to death than he should be. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, that's it. That's the end of my turn. All right. So this guy is going to. All right. So he sort of chatters away to himself. He goes, "Yes, I. Of course, I, I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve." And doesn't do anything. Oh, oh, that's not suspicious at all. Dorothea, you'll all right. go. All right, I am going to move. Here ish just so I can get a line on sights on them. Is that is that fine? Uh yes, that's fine, yeah. Okay. Uh and then I would like to try cast Sacred Flame. 
You go for it. Oh, wait. Wrong thing. So I have to make a dexterity saving oh, throw. Yes, it's yes, yes. Flame. Yeah, that's uh, Which is a 16. So you... you I you succeed. Play. I don't take any damage. Damn it. All Sacred right. Flame is bad. Uh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Pour uh, one out for the Sacred Flame. Yeah, that's going to be my turn then. Thank you, thank you. Watch right, you back I, up. I shall just swing it with my greatsword. Alrighty. And that one. Not good. That You've misses. Very I'm polar afraid. this game. That mm. misses. <laughs> that is my turn. I'm not doing anything else. Eddie, you're up. Firebolt, firebolt. Let's go. Quack. 15. 15 hits. Six fire right, damage. Six points of fire damage. So you get a solid strike in there, dealing yet again more damage, actually singeing part of the hair away on the side of his head. And he kind of momentarily screams out in pain and then snaps back to gibbering about serving some master. You can barely make out any of the words, but he seems to be absolutely entranced by his own words. Anything else? Uh, that's it for me. All right. Uh, Izar Sol, you're up. Eldritch Blast! <laughs> 15. All right, 15 suddenly hits. Five damage. Five damage, all right, yeah. So again, you, so you land a solid blow. No visible damage from it, though. It doesn't seem to be a major strike. Darmok. Why won't you die? <laughs> you're back up. Unless you're, there's you... anything else you'd like to do, Isa. No. Okay, Darmok, you're up. All right, well, I'm going to take a swing at him with my long sword. 18. 18, Jeez. that's certainly a hit. I feel like we're getting baited. 10 slashing. <laughs> 10 points of slashing damage. Yeah, you get a huge deep cut, and you start now to see some of this thick blackish red blood ooze out of him. Seemingly you struck some of the remaining unfrozen parts of his flesh. Uh, that, However, that'll be it. <laughs> it is now this strange man's turn and he seems to snap out of his muttering. He does seem to snap out of his muttering and he takes aim for you Fletch this time with the flail. And the first one is a 22. That hits. And that you certainly hits. Take <laughs> nine bludgeoning damage. And uh, <laughs> could you make me a constitution saving throw, please? Oh, come on, man. Uh, oh, seven. No. seven. Uh, you are poisoned until the end of your next turn. You oh, feel this God. immense wave of nausea roll over you. It doesn't feel long term, but you do just feel this almost like gut wrenching sickness. Okay. And on the backswing, he's going to swing towards you again, Fletch, for a 10. I'm going to assume that misses. And then once again, misses. in this crazed state, he's actually going to run past you two. Do you know what? He's going to run past all three of you. You can all make an attack of opportunity. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. It's Gale. Good thing right. I got me, Jamron. 16. 16 hits. 18, 18 hits. Uh, Dorothy? Eight slashing. Ooh. Boy! <laughs> yes! All right, roll your damage. <laughs> The Chris. I'll give you a clue. He's on one. So as, uh, as he tries to scramble past his eyes, suddenly fixed on Eddie, swinging his flail by his side, <laughs> he starts tearing it towards Eddie. He's receiving two slashes in the back, only to run face first into Dorothea's waiting hammer. And with a sickening crunch, he falls backwards, completely and surely dead to the floor. <laughs> I would like to and we fire are bolt him again, just in case. <laughs> Gross. But he smolders a little bit. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, what the hell is this? I don't know, but it's on my mace. I don't like it. So I'm going to wipe it off in the snow. I'll, uh, like, uh, you said he's just wearing shorts. Yeah, so he seems to have, like, no, no shorts. Yeah, it's just like Hawaiian shorts. shorts. Yeah. <laughs> he's, wearing, he's wearing, like, a ragged cloth trousers they have a few pockets on them and other than that the only thing he carries is this cruel looking flail of some sort of unusual dark metal you're not entirely familiar with can i check his pockets you can make me an investigation check dear lord this is gonna go well 13. you find a potion of greater healing oh, well, nice. why are you touching that thing dude uh, yes yeah. it's called looting we killed the dude we gotta loot Looked half dead already. Looks Ooh. like grandma, the damn thing. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Potion uh, old memes. of greater healing. Um, I want to get back. Can I? 
take a look at the mace too. It kind of looks kind of yeah, sure. black. You pick it up right? and it fancy. seems yeah, it, it's it's unusually constructed. It's not really like much you've ever seen. It is a uh, almost like the handle, the haft is made out of a, a dark wood, kind of oaken, bound with black leather, and then it has this seemingly iron or steel chain coming off of one end. But the actual weapon head itself is what is unusual to you. It's made out of this almost like obsidian-esque, but you're fairly sure it's not obsidian itself. Almost obsidian-like metal, very smooth and very almost crystalline in appearance, which juts out in cruel spikes fashioned into an ornate flail head. Everyone, take a look at this. This is nothing I've ever seen before. This type of material, metal, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, I'm not touching something that was uh, on on uh, a weird walking corpse man who was whispering to itself. I'm good. I'm sticking by the caravan. Dorothea, I will be... do you... Yeah, I was going to say, do I know what it is? The only one of you with the chance would be Fletch. Fletch, make me an arcana check. Whoa. Oh. Ooh. A nine. <laughs> uh, you don't recall anything. Okay. Okay. I'd be careful with that, Eddie. He hit me with it. I don't feel so good afterwards. Uh, yeah. the, well, the feeling of nausea has at this point passed. Much. Okay. It was only until the end of your next turn. So it's not like a Pokemon that keeps taking poison damage, right? <laughs> not, <laughs> well, not actually, like in the poison. newer versions, they I don't need do that anymore. Don't. That's true. They don't. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make my way over to Dorothy and be like, um... Do you have any more of those nice healing words that uh, you said last? I'm oh, for sure, duty. Need a little bit of a rest. Oh, oh. Healing words. While you're while you're <laughs> doing this to Dalmark, uh, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, Carlson <laughs> walks in between. He goes, "I'm sorry to uh, hiss you along, but I'd rather leave this place before more of whatever he is appears." And uh, I think the dogs would appreciate it too. Besides, we'll all freeze out here, everyone. Back Very in the well. sled. Back in the sled. I take the mace, by the way. You're taking I the flail. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Or sorry, the flail, sorry. You can add a uh, dark metal flail to your inventory. Great. Uh, this is not going to end well. Nope. Eddie's just a scavenger. He's just... Yep. <laughs> you want this eye? <laughs> no, <laughs> have it. Gross. So you all climb back aboard the wagon, and hastily this time you hear Carlson, even over the wind you hear him, barking words to the dogs, which quickly pick up and you get back on your way once again. Would any of you like to do anything or say anything during the rest of the journey? Nothing for me. No, I'm, I'm a little banged up. I'm going to probably yeah, rest so you, all, you get three healing. <laughs> Thank you. Woo. You all hunker down and uh, Eddie examine your new fun flail that you found. Yeah. The rest of you kind of recuperate a little bit from your wounds as you feel the sled starting to slow much more gradually this time until eventually you hear the noise of a gate sliding open and out the back of the sled, or the wagon even, all of a sudden you can see you pass through a gatehouse and a couple of guards on either side dressed in different uniforms to those in Bryn Shanda give you a wave and quickly close the gate behind you and the sled pulls to a halt in much of a similar courtyard as the one by Eastgate in Bryn Shanda it appears to be a kind of like warehouse unloading and loading station, but unlike Bryn Shanda, this one is actually very active still. You can see there appears to be all sorts of animated, lively discussions going on and people loading and unloading and even bartering over their wagons in the actual loading area itself. There's a lot more people here. And Carlson appears in view around the back of the wagon. He goes, all right, well, here we are in East Haven. So uh, you know what they say? Well, <laughs> watch thy pouch. But thank you for your help out there. I wouldn't have made it here myself. Well, thank you for the ride. Happy to be of service. Uh, Carlson, could you tell us where we might find the white lady? Oh, of course. The white lady is, uh, and he pulls out the map that you have. Of course you do, you're a tracker. And he just uh, indicates an area in the town of East Haven and... Assuming that this information is shared, you all now have access to the map of East Haven. There you go. Nice. And you can see the white lady in, or you should be able to see the white lady in, let me know if you can, indicated on the map. There we go. 
Very good. Good job, whoever pinged it. Five points to you. Yay! And he goes, <laughs> well, there it is. You can keep that. I've got a pile of them. So, uh, yeah, I guess this is where we part ways. Any questions about East Haven? I come through this way a lot. You were so helpful, I'd be remiss if I didn't offer. You said that this is a watch your coin purse kind of place. Is there anywhere we should definitely stay away from? With this, he gives a soft chuckle to himself and he goes, oh, <laughs> don't worry too much about that. Watch thy purse is a old East Haven saying. This place was founded by thieves and smugglers and, well, it's actually true that pickpocketing is legal within the town's limits. It's a nod to the founders. I don't say it would make you any friends, but if you're looking for a career in thievery, this is the town for you in the Dale. Mostly it's just a warm expression to newcomers. Hey, okay. Thank you. And with this, he, kind of, he kind of sees your concerned expression. He goes, uh, really, East Haven's a, a, a nice town. If you go looking for trouble, you'll find it, but I wouldn't worry you too much. All right, well, let's not go looking for trouble, as she, like, speedily looks at and makes sure no one's <laughs> eyeing out her coin purse. And, uh, There's nobody I'll... eyeing your coin purse. Good. <laughs> I'll uh, grab a, a gold out of my pouch and, and shake hands with Carlson and, Carlson and say uh, thank you again for your help. And with this, he actually uh, pushes your hand away. He says, Ooh. no, no, please. I'd be paying you, if anything. I'd have either had to turn around to Bryn Shander and lost a lot of my business, or, well, worse if I didn't have you here. So, no, please, I should be paying you. I'm not going to. <laughs> but I should. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Justin, goddammit. Um, <laughs> I'm always in character. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And then, yeah, I'll head into town. So with this, he, uh, he appears to turn and start slowly unloading the the furs and the pelts from his wagon and are you all are you all gonna what are you gonna do are you gonna head straight towards the white lady as marked on your maps or what yeah i would like to uh go to the white lady here hopefully it's a little bit nicer than the north look no offense to you doc so like he looks a little offended <laughs> but i said no you... offense <laughs> well they can't get offended then yeah as <laughs> as you head through east haven you realize with a look around you that this is Seemingly not a more prosperous town, but perhaps a more liberal town than Bryn Shanda. There's a lot more sort of stores and businesses by the roadside. You see, you see harkers selling things, even in these conditions. As you arrive, it's becoming late evening, really, and the light has faded almost entirely. What was medium to dark tones of gray cast through the blizzard is now, I mean, you can see by the virtue of streetlight and torchlight, essentially. With a little bit of light in between, but generally speaking, it's much darker now as you head towards the White Lady Inn, which seems to be in a more affluent part of town. It's right by the by the waterfront, actually, and you get the impression here that a lot of the buildings and houses are older. You see shipping warehouses and red brick houses, which is an unusual sight in ten towns, where often things are either constructed or repaired hastily using timber and roughly hewn stone. But here, the houses are quite beautiful. They're quite red brick, and even some thatched roof to insulate against the cold. But as you approach the White Lady Inn, there's little to no activity outside. The street at sounds seems relatively quiet compared to the hubbub of the busier streets that you made your way on. And what would you like to do? Would you just like to head inside? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you head inside the White Lady Inn. And as you enter, you have a look around quickly. And it's a very nice establishment. It's stone floors and wooden tables. It definitely seems to be set up more for sort of eating and relaxing than a, a rowdier tavern establishment like the North Look might be. There's no gaming tables here, unfortunately. Maybe the wet trout can suffice your need there, but <laughs> the White Lady appears to be somewhat of a, a classier, nicer establishment without any patrons drinking at the bar even. There appears to be table services. An older, slightly grumpier landlord appears to be taking a tray of food to someone. The only other character in there outside, the few patrons eating their dinner, all of whom seem to be on the elderly side of life, is a bardic figure up on the stage. He wears traditional bardic garb, which is a surprising splash of color in Ten Towns. It's not something you see too often. 
And he appears to be tuning up a loot, just gently rests on one knee. He pays you no heed at all as you walk in. In fact, no one in here even seems to react to your presence at all. What would you like to do? Should we get a table? Eat some supper? I? I'm not exactly seeing... the clientele I'm used to, but this place is not half bad. At least eat one meal with us, Ezar. Come on. What are you talking about? If, if we're going to be here for multiple days, this is where I'm staying. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I wonder if that fellow's uh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. I'm going to I, I would be so. surprised if it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if he's got some pipes. Are, on you, it, all, are you all pulling up a table? Yeah. Yes. Hey. I'm gonna As you do around. this, the uh, the older landlord, he's a, quite a wiry gentleman, maybe in his you know, late 60s, early 70s. He, he shuffles over and he goes, Oh, newcomers, are we? Welcome to the White Lady Inn. Can I get you some menus? Aye, thank you. Very well. He kind of shuffles back off to the bar and returns with five very dusty, very well-worn menus where half the items are illegible as they've been thumbed over so many times. He goes, here you are. Whoa, nearly eighth hour. Kitchen will close soon. If you've got anything else you need, can I get you drinks? One ale. One ale? The, the same for me. Mead. I'll take some mead, thank you. Yeah. Two ales and a mead? I'll you take gentlemen? the spiciest cider that you have on tap. Hmm. Not much <laughs> cider in the town these days. Put you back a little bit, but all right. What about mead you? for me. It's all right. And after a minute of some musty shuffling, he returns with a tray of drinks, as requested, and you find all the drinks to actually be Pretty high quality and pretty nice. And he goes, shall I take payment now or do you plan to open a tab? I'm going to take payment now. Yeah, uh, okay. can I get the uh, house special and then and then they'll uh, pay for it? Which house special is this? Uh, Would you... Any, whatever the, the most popular food item is on your menu. Oh, you want to order food? Yes, of course. Uh, I think it's a beef roast with all the trimmings. Oh, two of those, please. Two of those? Make, make three. Make it three. four. Oh, well, yeah, I'll just... <laughs> Full round. All right, all right. And he <laughs> shuffles off and disappears through a back door into the kitchen. Nothing makes me more happy than shopping episodes and food episodes. <laughs> you always all end up ordering, like, full dinner anytime you go anywhere. It's amazing. Hey, I'm hungry. I don't know. Yeah, goodness. we had a long be, travel. Yeah, it's okay. like seven or eight hours on a travel. We used all of, our, um, all of our calories to heat our Would bodies. you like to know what my DM note says about the menu? It says, <laughs> make up food or just say <laughs> roast beef. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> nope. Yeah. Roast beef for everyone, then. That one. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, he kind of shuffles away into the kitchen and uh, seemingly for now is gone. Presumably it takes some time to prepare your food. Uh, the bard is still on stage just tuning up an instrument and the other older patrons are all sitting a fair way away from you and paying you no heed, really. What would you like to do? So how do we bridge this topic with Ronaldo? Remind me quickly, he's the guy that we're going to talk to about the weird... Basically the eye, right? The eye. So you're very he's intrigued magic. by the, the blue eyes right. that you saw in Sephic Caltro, and he was referred to you by Commander Fiona okay. as a uh, seemingly, reportedly, an expert on kind of the older, more natural magic of Icewind Dale. Okay. Bill, I don't know about you, but he doesn't exactly look like the kind who would know what we want to find out. Bards often know the tales and stories of their land perhaps oh, it's something true. like that perhaps. as you uh, as you debate whether he looks like he'd know about that you notice that he's quite a experienced looking guy he's a halfling probably in his mid 40s he's obviously been on an adventure or two he seems to carry a few scars and seems to carry himself with a certain degree of confidence that you've seen in typically veteran warriors which is very at odds with his appearance and dressed quite flamboyantly in bardic gear and holding an instrument and Every now and again, he does seem to catch a glance up at you and smile, almost as if he's fully aware of why you're there, but it's hard to tell. All right, well, I mean, uh, Dorothea just kind of wants to sit and listen to his song if he ever plays. 
yeah, I mean, eventually, if, as you start sitting there waiting for your waiting for your food, five or six minutes pass, and eventually, yeah, he he kicks up into song, and he just appears to be playing some lovely Celtic ambient background music, which you can hear right now, and uh, yeah, seems to be happily plucking away. Definitely an inoffensive song choice, given the clientele who may not appreciate the more post-hardcore side of Ten Towns music. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll get to in a later episode. Wait. <laughs> I'd like to make a request. Uh, can I hear some coheed, please? <laughs> oh, but here's Wonderwall. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> gonna be the day that we're back. <laughs> yeah. I am leaving. Oh. I'm stopping. Um, uh, I live in Manchester. Can't take the piss out of Oasis. I mean, you can a lot, but. <laughs> you definitely can. You definitely uh, can. I like Wonderwall. I don't care that it's, it's a meme. It's the worst Oasis song, but you know, I sure. Yeah, I mean, fair. <laughs> D &D. Uh, like D &D right, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> this is just a, this is a podcast where six people talk about stuff. Um, talk about Oasis and happen to do weird magical stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna cast. Uh, I'm gonna cast Unseen Servant. Okay. Okay. So you summon your Unseen Servant, who is unseen by your side. Yeah. Um, I just realized that I don't think this thing. Darn. No, I actually, I realized that I don't think this thing can do the thing that I wanted it to do. Oh, what, what would you like it to do? I was gonna, I was gonna have it go uh, stand next to some of the older patrons and just listen to them and report back, but I don't I think, don't think, I don't think it can. I don't think it can talk. No, yeah. No. That's, yeah. Unseen butler, oh. sadly, cannot talk. He's just, he's just there now. Can it write, though? <laughs> uh, I think so. Maybe, yeah, probably. So at this point, your, uh, your food appears to come out the kitchen, carried... <laughs> on two heaving trays by the elderly landlord and he puts it down in front of each one of you and goes, I'll take payment at the end. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Shuffles away. Uh, eager fellow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we just, we just wait till he hail him out. over, I think, would be the best, you know. Yeah. I'm going gonna, to have my unseen servant do a little prank because it's funny. I need some levity. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have my unseen servant go uh, go up to one of the uh, the tables with some older gentlemen who are uh, eating and just have have him move the food just very slightly. <laughs> so you do this, and uh, the rest of you, you you're completely unaware of what Justin's no, doing. No you idea. saw him, you saw him casting a spell because you know uh, the the casting of unseen servant is not yeah. unseen. But yeah. after a few minutes, you just hear a, a slight thud noise, and you turn around to see that an elderly gentleman eating a roast dinner has accidentally prodded his fork into the table instead of his plate, and he appears to be utterly bewildered as to how that happened, while his friend has quite the laugh at his expense. <laughs> do, do we notice that uh, Izar is staring in that direction? I, don't know, I mean, Izar, you, you, you notice me laughing. <laughs> himself. Hey, look, this place is dim, all right? I needed some sort of entertainment. Something. Uh, that, that was you? You do. All right. Uh, by by now, I have uh, commanded my little servant boy to uh, to come tap. Uh, so <laughs> come, I hate to, it. To come to come tap a uh, 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 drawback. No. It's All right. right so shoulder. while while Justin wreaks havoc with his oh. unseen servant, <laughs> this could go on and on. He's going to be punished for it a later date. <laughs> Ice and Dale will remember this. Ronaldo the Bard on stage has finished his song and appears to be considering the process of retuning his lute. For now, there's no music, and if you were going to talk to him, this would appear to be a natural opportunity. Oh, I'm going to hop up. I've I've got I've got this. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to command my unseen servant to uh, go right. tug on his. Uh, Tug on his. Uh, Do you not think that's going to frighten him? Well, nah, he seems fine. His, tugging on his what? Like some some piece of clothing, <laughs> just like. So <laughs> while your unseen servant goes off to him and begins tugging on a uh, sort of the edge of his trousers, you notice that he immediately fixes you, Izar, with an icy gaze, and he goes, "Oh come on, I've seen this one before." <laughs> He goes, I'll, he goes, I'll tell I'll tell them what you did with his fork if you don't stop. <laughs> Technically, I didn't do anything with the fork. Well, we can see if he agrees with that technicality. <laughs> uh, this, he, uh, he, gonna, he hops gonna, off the stage. I'm going to chime up and be like, uh, would you would you like to sit around and, and have a, an ale or a maid with us? He goes, why? I thought you'd never ask. That sounds fantastic, darlings. And he hops off the stage and strides towards you and pulls up a stool and sits on it at the end of your table and he goes, 
Now, do tell me what such a fantastic group as yourselves done to find themselves in a musty old mothball like this. Well, we're here to hear you sing, of course. I somewhat doubt that's true, quite frankly. You're very it's uh, not the most culturally sensitive place here. Oh, we were sent uh, from Commander Fiona. Said that you might be the man to talk to about something that we had. Uh, I mean, we don't even else? technically know if this is the guy, right? Oh, were you now? Sure. What would you like to speak to me about? I know an awful lot about 8th century water deep compositions. Somehow, I don't think that's why you're here. No. Just, to, just to double check. Yes. Your name is uh, your name's Ronaldo, right? No, it's Trevor. <laughs> I would like lie. I would like to, uh, <laughs> to to see if he's lying. <laughs> this bard is like probably check. amazing at deception. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> what was it? Like inside check. Inside. I got a. <laughs> <laughs> Could be Trevor. Dark. <laughs> By the shitty to grin on his face. You <laughs> okay. Kind of insinuate it's not, but it could be. For a moment, Isai goes. Ah. <laughs> Darmok's gonna give like a big hearty laugh at that and, and, uh, and call this, over an ale. He looks. Uh, he looks very pleased with Darmok's reaction. When with this, he cracks a great big white toothed grin and he just goes, "Yes, my apologies. I, I find my fun where I can here. Yes, I am. Do I, Ronaldo?" Traveling bard extraordinaire, and he sort of sarcastically gestures around at his surroundings. He goes, who needs money to eat? So, Hello. what can I help you all with? We, we have a... We have an eye we want you to take a look at. <laughs> we need a I don't know, eye, though? I don't know how to be more persuasive than that. I can buy you uh, dinner if you look at this eyeball we have. Maybe not in... My, oh my. Look at an eye. Dinner. Nice. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Do we need to show him the eye, though? Is uh, it, like, not creepy anymore? Yeah, no. We, uh, we're looking for information about, uh, any humanoid that has glowing blue eyes. Have you ever heard is any stories about yes. anyone like that? Well, my awfully handsome paladin friend, I'm afraid that there are quite a few of those in Icewind Dale. It, it's a very blue place, very magical. It's all sorts of old-fashioned spookiness here. Mm. However, it's funny you mention such a thing, or I think levity aside, you may have been sent to the right person. For while I do travel around, I do love to perform and eat. I do have a somewhat passing interest in some of the more arcane side of the world in which we inhabit. And recent years have found me in the Dale, most fascinated by ongoing weather reports, shall we say. So, with that in mind, I suggest that while, you know, subtlety and being careful cannot be overvalued, I think we have already proven we have a mutual ally in our friend Fiona. So I suppose we speak openly and honestly with each other when it comes to looking at gouged out eyes, for instance. <laughs> Listen, I'm assuming I that wanted to be out front. once glowed. But now it does not. Most likely by your actions. Correct. I. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Besides, I haven't got all of your names yet. And with this, I assume each one of you introduces yourself. Yes. yes. Yippers. Yeah, uh, Darmok's gonna, uh, like, when the drink arrives, just, like, during the introduction, just, like, hand him the drink. <laughs> he looks very appreciative of the ale, and uh, he, he takes a big hearty swig immediately, and he goes... That's oh, very, very polite of you. Thank you. Thank you kindly. So, tell me, how did you happen to come by this eye? Well, we gouged it out of the head of uh, someone, you know, going around murdering things. Oh, a murderer. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm going to assume he deserved it. Oh, for sure. Otherwise, Fiona would have locked you away, or worse. She has an awful temper, that one. But I, her pretty. Good to know. <laughs> she is rather dashing, yes, but unfortunately, not interested. So, you gouged the eye of a murderer out. Right. And that led Fiona to giving you where my whereabouts are. I feel as though I'm missing a few steps. Ronaldo, do you know the name Sethic Caldro? In your amazing adventuring career, have you ever run across that name before? But this, he seems to give it a genuine moment of thought and he goes, I'm afraid not. No, I've met many a name in my time. I may have simply forgotten it, but that would be most unlike me. Well, no, this I didn't man think was... so. If this man's eyes were to glow, that would be maybe the person that we dispatched. I mean, what literally it? said we should speak clearly. Yeah, we don't need these dancing around. We we killed a dude who had like weirdly glowing blue eyes. Um, hmm. I I heard that he didn't like bleed normal, uh, and he like he was cold to the to touch. Dog. Yeah, like we we killed a dude like that who, for what it's worth, was killing people. When you, say, that. when you say he was cold to the touch and didn't bleed, you can see Ronaldo's kind of slight bravado slip a little and he goes, Ah. Yes, I was wondering if it might have been related to that. I encountered someone similar. Somebody brought back. Inhabited oh. by something that wasn't their own. Wait, so he was I dead? You may have killed no man at all. Rather, denied something a vehicle. Oh, fudge. Ooh. Tell me, this man whom you slay, did he impart any parting wisdom? Any gifts? Any clues? Or were his lips sealed to the very end? Oh, he was very chatty. Yes, and remember he, uh... well, because the DM knows. Hmm. <laughs> He did say Let that he was no notes. man. Well, that's certainly a clue, isn't it? Did An he admission, Mike, in fact. Did he not also make mention of serving someone else? He used, and I quote, I kill in the name of her. <laughs> and with this, you can see Ronaldo's grip on the mug. The knuckles whiten slightly as he tenses and he goes, Damn. I'd been hoping this was some two-bit necromancer or fool playing tricks. Tell me, how much do you know of what plights the Dale? It's snowy all the time. Yes, yes it is. And typically it is rather cold here, but I'm afraid this is extracurricular cold. The unending winter is brought on by the wrath of the Frost Maiden. Oral. All who oppose Oral so far have failed. It seems as though you encountered someone or something that was one of her agents. Could have been what that thing was out in the snow on the way here. It didn't, it wasn't the same though. It bled. Forgive me, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself, sorry. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh no, on the way over here, there was another one that we thought was similar to Sefik, but he had his arm chopped off, and then all of a sudden there was a, there was a, what was it? A mallet or an axe or something? Flail. A flail? Do we still have that? Can we show him? I, I, I do. <laughs> I'll show him the flail. flail. I'll show him you the get the flail out flail. of his pack, and as soon as it breaks the cover of the table out of your backpack, he grabs your arm that's lifting it up and goes, put that away. Stow I that. put it away. That is something else entirely. Uh-oh. And that is something which I will tell you what I know, although I do not know that much. But put that away. <laughs> Putting it away. I told you it was evil. Oh, With that oh, ominous dear. warning, we'll take a short break. So we can stretch <laughs> our legs. Lovely. Hide our flails. I hate it. <laughs> 
All right, so we return to it as uh, the party are just mid-conversation with Ronaldo, talking about their recent events, and they just, well, John just uh, showed a flail that Eddie had picked up after the battle on the way to East Haven, which Ronaldo reacted somewhat adversely to. So, what'd you like to do? So, Ronaldo, how is it that you've yes. come to know so much about this? Well, truth be told, I've traveled around for 30, 40 years at this point. You know, I've took an interest, I suppose you could say. I encountered some hmm, not so pleasant people a long time ago. Took somewhat of a rivalry on with them, I guess you could say. And eventually it led me to the Dale. I've always had a great interest in, I suppose you could call them artifacts of power or simply powerful occurrences nonetheless. So this thing of which we shan't speak or show, what should we do with it? Is it dangerous? That flail is made of something that I don't know all about. But I do know that it's trouble. One of the few things that I can tell you about it is it's native to the Dale, that material. And it's called Chardalin. That's C-H-A-R-D-A-L-Y-N. Chardalin. I'll put it in the chat for you. Chardalin? I've never heard of it. Because all I know is there was once a great building here of huge power and importance that belonged to a wizard. They said he constructed it of this Chardalin and what remains behind is the remnants. That's all I know. Could be a legend for all the verification I have. That's what they say. Be careful with it, it's rarely linked to good fortune. Eddie, you had to pick it up, huh? <laughs> yes. It's... It seemed important. Random snow dude in oh. the middle of nowhere. Eddie, calm yourself, my friend. <laughs> I don't think it came to you per chance. And in fact, I think I may know why you've been sent here entirely. You're asking of what I view as a possession. This Sefek man you slay. I believe he was possessed by a spirit of winter. One of which is bound to the Frost Maiden. He controls most of the wintry magic, as you may imagine. One does not simply stumble into the title of Frost Maiden. <laughs> so I believe it was likely indebted to her, seeking to, well, further what plan we may never know. The good news is that you frustrated her in doing so. The bad news is she's almost certainly seen your faces now. Oh dear. However, while we speak truthfully and openly, I'm here tracking similar magics myself. And unsurprisingly, I didn't exactly choose to be playing in the White Lady Inn today. Well, I did choose, but perhaps not for the traditional reasons of bardic inspiration. See what I did there, but anyway. Nice. Not for the usual reasons. I found myself here as I'm investigating a local phenomenon. It turns out that the White Lady Inn is named so after somebody I think you should meet. Who am I but I ask you? only by the White Lady, of course. Classic. Darmok is much more interested suddenly. I offered to play here. In return for access to a room, a few candles, and privacy. Oh my. Oh? The crusty old fool running this place was all too eager for the free entertainment. Saved his pennies. But I've stumbled onto something. Something I'm willing to share with you all. But you must have an open mind. 
Well, for the seance to work, <laughs> you cannot approach it with hostile intent. What about what about wary, um, frankly horrified intent? <laughs> oh, that might work just fine, my friend. <laughs> So, Ronaldo, does that mean the white lady refers to a, a ghost or something something like that? But in layman's terms, I think so, yes. If you ask me, and this is speculation, I pull no punch with that. I believe her to be another winter spirit bound to this place, and from what I have gleaned so far... I can only summon her for short periods of time, but she seems protective of East Haven. She gave me information about something I was looking for. Something that put me at odds with the same people you may end up at odds with yourself. In fact, intelligence networks work both ways. And Fletch... I believe you may be aware of the group of people of which I'm speaking. A group of somewhat irresponsible magic users. I've heard of a sort like that, yes. I imagine you have. So know that we truly are allies, my friend. And the white lady assisted me in a matter regarding this. I see no reason if you are benefactory to East Haven and well, the Dale as a whole, she may wish to help you too. Yeah, I think let's do it. Are you all in? Sure. I mean, like, I guess I, just, I don't oh, like. Oh, come on, don't be such a chicken. I don't like dead things. I don't like angels. I don't like demons or devils. Mortals, you can, like, deal with. You could give them gold. You can threaten them. Mortals, easy. Easy. You can't do the same thing with dead things, With man. This, Ronaldo cocks an eyebrow <laughs> towards you, and he goes, Speaking of devils and demons, you have an awfully expanded vocabulary for such a young man. Anyway, I shall prepare the seance. <laughs> now, I warn you, I'm unable to tether her to one place for a long time. You might not have awfully long with her. So plan what you want to ask her and meet me through there. And he gestures to one of the rooms leading off the main room. Meet me through there in a few moments. I must prepare. I suggest Ooh. you use this time wisely. Oh, mm. what do you ask a ghost? I've never met one before. Do you do formal introductions or you just go for it? So, I feel like you just me. have to go for it. Yeah. Don't have the time to mince words. All right. So no mincing words. So what, what are we going to ask her? Where does Sephic Keltro's spirit come from? Why is the Frost Maiden doing the thing she's inhabiting doing? Inhabiting is... Sephic Keltro. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, where, where does this winter come from? How do we get rid of it? I mean, how? what would she know? Well, I wish. why don't... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, well, I was going to say, why don't we start off by asking, why is the Frost Maiden doing this? That's yeah, kind of why? a general enough question, and we may get a good answer out of that. But then perhaps, you know, how do we stop it? I mean, I guess, my guess for the answer to the first one is because uh, she's an a-hole. <laughs> The second piece is probably we have to do some nonsense for her, or just the. Uh, wait, no, do we, do we, shouldn't we ask what it is? Okay. Do we know if it's a god or something? Like what the, oral the is? Maiden? Yeah. We could. Because well, if it's, Cause if it's, if it's like another? a, if it's like an actual deity, it's gonna be a little bit harder for a you know five. Uh, Ragamuffins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was gonna be nicer to us. Uh, it's gonna be harder for us to deal with that if it's instead if it's just like a local spirit or something like that. Remember, I hate these things. They're not mortals. You can't. Why? Why don't we ask her how? Uh, what makes other mortals be possessed? Like, what? What are they doing? What? How do we stop the possession? Something? Yeah, like how? 
why are these people specifically being possessed and working for the Frost Maiden at that point? It might put us on a path to understand it a little bit more. I mean, it's possible, based on what uh, Ronaldo said, that they're they're not possessed willingly. <laughs> no, no, they're not necessarily possessed. It's possible they're just like corpses, like they're husks, essentially being piloted, as opposed to like people people's like living bodies being overrun by creepy ghosty goblins. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we, uh, we have Arcane a couple questions scholar, Justin. then. <laughs> yeah. So the questions are again. Why is who? the frost maiden doing this? <laughs> yeah. Why is a good one? Yeah. Why? How do we stop it? And I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's her favorite type of tea. Yeah. Let's ask her that. Why not? I'll get us far. Hmm. Let's let's just go in there and see what she says and go off of those as well. All right. No. Yeah. Like you said, we're not gonna get too much time with her potentially, so just take all the information we can get. Should uh, should we have someone do the talking, or maybe that'll be Ronaldo? I don't know. I don't know how this works. This isn't the type of magic I'm used to doing. This is also my first science. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I just wanted to go to every Sunday, you know, just kind of Well, it's not my and... it's, it's not <laughs> technically not my first, but uh I'm not talking. I'm not saying a damn thing. Unless I unless I need to. I don't like talking to these other otherworldly deities, all right? I I hear them in my dreams and stuff. I don't like it. I don't like it. I have many more questions which we don't I... have the time to ask right now. <laughs> well, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind talking to a nice little lady for once in a while. So nice Please stop trying well, to It's probably not. Everything. It's probably it's probably similar. Good luck. You, whatever you it is, whatever happens. Woman and just calm down. I need to keep you guys away from the ghosts next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to flirt with it. The next ghost. I'm going to call it a goblin and ask, ask how to kill the boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, go for We're it. Just unconventional, it's fine. Uh, all right, so let's let's go follow him upstairs. All right, so you guys, uh, well, it's not upstairs. It's just at one of the back rooms from the ground floor. So okay. you guys uh, head into the back room. Now, when you enter the room, you see that smoke from burning incense clouds the room and multicolored lamps and silks are hung from the rafters. The light of several candles illuminates a circle on the floor where the candles have been laid out. And Ronaldo pushes back the sleeves of his robes, raises his hands, closes his eyes, and... As soon as you're all in the room, says in his voice, Lady who watches from the lake, come to us in our darkest hour. Tell us what you've seen. And after a moment of silence, thick frost forms on the inside of the room's windows. There's a noticeable chill in the air. The frost continues until the windows are opaque and the candles go out one by one. At this point, Ronaldo looks up and he whispers in a hurried voice to you all she's here it's time for you to ask what you will Fletch, ask the questions uh, why is the frost maiden doing this at this question you hear a breath of cold air behind your right ear and as you all look up, you hear almost a squeaking sound as letters begin to form in the frost on one of the windows. That's cool. Slowly, it spells out, Winter's cruelty knows no bounds. Hmm. After a few seconds of this message being visible, the frost supernaturally just speeds back over it, wiping it from vision. How can we stop her? Once again, a noticeable chill shifts in the air until the words are slowly formed on the window once more, accompanied by a slow, ear-piercing squeak that simply says, Kill the Frost Maiden. How do we kill the Frost Maiden? With this... 
No letters begin to form as the room gets colder and colder. Where do we find the Frost Maiden? Once again, this time, Darmok, you feel a rush of cold air behind you. And one word forms that simply says solstice. Um, winter or summer winter. solstice? I mean, I guess it's just winter, right? It's always winter. But this, as you say that, <laughs> Dorothea, the window it was written on, writ writ written on, shatters and blows out. Winter. And after a few seconds of howling gale blowing in, another window, letters slowly begin to appear that say, the Isle. And Isle is in capital letters of Solstice. Ooh. Isle of Solstice. When you say Isle, you mean like an island Isle? Like that way to spell it? I S L E. Isle. Is Isle. The, the Isle. Isle of Solstice. Yes. Yeah. I see. Okay. And with this, Ronaldo goes, She won't be here much longer. Any other questions you have? Now's the time. About the more proximal things that we're talking about. What? What? J just ask her. I, no, no, I'm just scared, speak. man. I'm scared. She's gonna leave. Just ask her. Come on. Uh, 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 how do we deal with the uh, the creepy ghost people that like uh, 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 inhabited uh, Sephic's body thing? White so lady she can parse that clues. out for a second. <laughs> yeah. After like... passing your nonsense, <laughs> once again, letters appear next to the broken window on the second pane and says, Oral spirits take the dead. Uh, okay. Great. <laughs> well, that's reassuring. Um, uh... Yeah. Uh, so you begin to feel the cold in the room rescind. Dharma, uh, Dharma's uh, gonna like, like, uh, just just ask very very quickly since there's there's no more questions. Huh? He's gonna say, um, where can I find a fish that swallowed a seal? You could, no. You're really gonna <laughs> ask that? Oh. What? Do you have anything else? Well, I did. But I guess it's too late now. Oh, I feel Cold good. rescinds from the room. Okay. And as it does, the glass flies up from the floor and reseals the broken window. Oh, well, that's a new one. Fancy. Ronaldo breathes out half a sigh of exhilaration and half a sigh of relief. Ronaldo breathes out and goes, oh, That was more than I've seen her give to anyone. You must sense you have a purpose. Uh, that was uh, oh, was a bone chilling experience for sure. I would look behind you before you decide things are over. And as you turn behind you, in the frost rhymed on the door from which you came, are written three words that say, "Invisible dwarves stalk." Great. Huh. Made any dwarven enemies recently? Dorothy is going to start, like, poking around in the open area. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to, like, feel one. See, see if, if you can find one. Is. You don't do I, feel any. Do I find one? Damn it. <laughs> you do not. Uh, no. I mean, we helped a bunch of dwarves get their iron back, but. Did we make any enemies? I don't recall. Well, no, Ronaldo no. said that they know our face. Oh, shit. I mean, invisible dwarf stock has to be some type of, not riddle, but everything else that she said really was a little cryptic. 
Bill. Perhaps it doesn't well, except, mean... Except kill the Frost Maiden. Except, I think that was quite Except direct. kill the Frost Maiden, that's yeah, true. Yeah, I don't think there's two ways about that one. Isle Ronaldo, of do you know of an Isle of Solstice? Is there a is there an island around here named Solstice? With this, he kind of breathes the sign. He goes, an island of Solstice. I'm afraid it doesn't ring any bells immediately. I have heard tales for how to approach the isle, but I don't know if it's the Isle of Solstice they were talking about. Legend has it, and truly, you may not believe this, but legend has it that there's a whale who will carry weary travelers where it needs to go. Again, most likely a silly story of the Dale, but I thought I'd mention it nonetheless. Sorry now, you, you sort of asked the whale to take you anywhere, and it will. Indians. All I know is there's a story of a whale. People claim to have traveled on the back of a whale. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know any more than that. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Yes. You hear all sorts in this line of work. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, so... We have to worry about invisible dwarves stalking us. Great. We have to go kill oh. a frost maiden on the Isle of Solstice, getting there by a whale. That seems pretty and we, straightforward. And don't forget, we wasted a question on a goddamn fish. Should you? What, what, Dorothea, what were you going to ask? I thought we had no more questions. I, uh, my question was also a selfish one, so, you, you know, we'll we'll just leave it at that. You know what I had to deal with back home? I had to deal with scoundrels, street rats, riffraff. I didn't have to deal with riding on the back of a whale in the freezing cold, talking to spirits and stuff, dealing with undead, half-dead monsters in the snow, and a bunch of creepy poor people who never creepy see the sun. Creepy poor people. <laughs> Excuse me. I am not poor. Uh, well, you know. He's on just comparatively we're all, speaking. We're all a little out of our depth here. I think just yeah. just relax. Man, no one's an expert relax, on man. this. I can't relax in this place. These are if you know your family thinks of that a prophecy, wouldn't this be exactly what you were meant to do anyway? They could be wrong. I could yeah. die here. It's a lot of coincidences. Is well, it? if you are the promised <laughs> Is son it? to bring then, back the uh, sun. Yeah, then chances are you're the one who's going to kill the Frost Maiden and we get Summer back. Who knows? So if you've got that in your back corner, you know, you can't die. Think about it like that. Uh, what a freaking what? out, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, this uh, invisible dwarf stalk. Oh, yeah. Now, does, does this mean that if we leave this room, we're about to be attacked by Ambushed. a party of invisible dwarves? Or does it mean that we are being followed and we should watch what we say in unsecure locations? At this point, Ronaldo looks towards you and goes, well, I could head out first and see if anybody attacks me, if that would help. I mean, no, we can just go out together. Just, you know, keep your weapons at the ready and uh, maybe swing them around the old... a couple times. Were the old gentlemen that I messed with dwarfs? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully not. <laughs> this one, Ronaldo goes, Well, I suppose a pertinent bit of information, and I doubt the white lady cares enough to distinguish. I have met, and I hate to say it, he glances at you, Dorothea. I have met some of the dark dwarves in the dale. Dordragar, as they're often known. I believe they make sure it's ooh, that's a challenge. It's D-U-E-R-G-A-R -E off the top of my head. Durgar. 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 Sure, why not? Dirk. Somebody comments is like, mm, actually it's spelled blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Um <laughs> Yes, now I believe they make extensive use of the Dale and its natural resources. And that's what I was meaning to talk to you about that flail. 
The Duragar I have met were using similar. Not the flail itself, but the materials. Right. In fact, I, in my, we shall call them studies, but that is another topic that for now shall stay under wraps. In my studies, I happened upon them with a hoard of the material. It seemed as though they cared for it a great deal. As to what purpose, I do not know. Ronaldo, do you know if this Chardolin, is it is it something they still actively mine, or is there a limited amount oh, of it? Oh, no, my dear friend. Chardolin is not a mined substance. Uh, there are tales that Chardolin's origin is not of this plane. And it came into existence through deals and magics. He shoots you a dry glance, Caesar. <laughs> so, no. I fear the Duragar are acquiring it for their own nefarious purposes. For well, they often have nefar nefarious even purposes. So, I don't think they're mining it. I think they're seeking it. Hmm. So about that flail in your pocket there, Eddie. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Bad luck. Maybe we shouldn't be carrying it around. But do we really want to give it to someone who's yeah, doing it for nefarious purposes? True, but if they're seeking it out, they know you have it, they're going to come and kill us in their sleep. Yes. That's why yes. he's holding it, not us. Right. <laughs> Either we leave it somewhere... They pick it up, know that we had it, think we have more, come kill us anyway. Or at least we have it, so they can't use it against us. All right, fine. Guess we keep it then. This Ronaldo Cox and I, Ronnie goes, it seems as though you may have marked yourself in the eyes of these Duragar. They are likely to use the kinds of deceptive magic if the white lady is speaking the truth, to become invisible. Such magic can be countered, as I'm sure you may be aware, but it will make the task at hand somewhat more difficult. I also approach trepidatiously, for I am aware that the Dale and the Frost Maiden are on the tips of everybody's tongues, but the Doragar and those they may have alliance with in the Underdark is not a threat to simply be ignored or waved off. They are terribly genius. They possess an intellect used solely for evil. And I fear that the brave folk of the Dale would never have withstood anything like it. with this, he kind of seems to almost check himself as though he's worried about scaring you in a way. You see him cock a weak smile and he goes, <laughs> but I, that's just the speculation of an aging bard. <laughs> you are free to do as you wish, although perhaps bear your invisible friends in mind. Just walk around with our pointy sticks out, I guess. I had another question for you before we, uh, Carry on or continue. Do you know anything about a ship in the ice guarded by a dragon? With this, both of his eyebrows do raise and he goes, Oh, you're talking about the rumors of the vessel yes. in the ice. Yes, yes. I haven't really looked into it myself, to be honest. I didn't really know what to make of it. All right. Shall and with this, he pauses. And he breathes down and he goes, I suppose it speaks to my origins that the most interesting part I find is the dragon. Oh, for sure. Or if there is a draconic presence in the Dale, that changes everything. How though? Have you ever encountered a dragon, Nizar? Thankfully, no! <laughs> the very fact it is thankful should be indicative of how it would change things. 
Well, it could change things for the better or the worse. They're vicious, horrible beings. He's a, tell me, you are an intelligent young man. Debate. We're a dragon to be of these parts. On the chromatic scale, what color of dragon would you expect it to be? I'm going to point at Drummock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does your friend right. a disservice. Dragonborn bear nothing but a resemblance to the dragons. But you are correct. Likely a white dragon. But that's Do you a bad know thing, anything right? about white dragons? Uh, no. <laughs> I just know that I don't have to deal with dragons in the city. Pray keep it that way. But yes, I have heard of the ship in the ice and the rumors of the dragon guarding it, but truth be told, I haven't looked into the matter. Perhaps it will be of interest eventually. So, where do we go from here? We're looking for some Isle of Solstice, trying not to get attacked by invisible dwarves, and trying to kill the Frost Maiden. Seems like Riding a on the back easy of a whale, whale potentially. Oh, yes, and the whale. That's right. Oh, but we, I mean, we do also need to put a stop to the, the Duragar, I think. Oh, right, so we get to go underground. Yay! And if there is a dragon, it probably does need to be slayed as well. Oh, great. Can we uh, after... like make a, a list of priorities here and be like, okay, we're going to go there, then we're going to go there, then we're going to go there. Otherwise, we're just going to get sidetracked and we'll never... We ever... have so many side quests. It's nuts. <laughs> we do. <laughs> but what's And the, I'm what's streamlining things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> after what, all what of the, the things title? that... Um... Oh, I mean, uh, you would assume... You spent a little bit of time in the tavern eating... You just assume it's, it's probably getting to half eight, nine o'clock at night. Right. It's what definitely winding down for the night. All right. Well, we can't go doing anything about in the middle of the night. That would just be stupid. Uh, so why don't we find somewhere to sort of rest for the night? I'm guessing here would be a good thing, unless you're afraid of ghosts. There, uh, there, there is. I'm not. I'm not afraid of ghosts. I just don't want to be Ooh. around things that aren't mortal. I don't like it. He's afraid of ghosts. So, if we are to believe invisible dwarf stock, perhaps ambushes aren't out of the question. Right, well, let's uh, when let's we walk out the door and find out. Yeah. Maybe sleep uh, with one eye open. With one eye open. <laughs> nice. Watching your flail tight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So what, what would you like to do? Are you are you going back into the main room of the tavern, I take it? Uh, at the very least, I think we're going to do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you, you guys head back into the main room. You are not immediately accosted by an army of Duragar yet. Cool. <laughs> and Ronaldo yeah. sort of breathes out a sigh of relief when he realizes this and goes, well, I'm staying here too for the time being, but... The seance and the summoning takes an awful lot out of me, so I will bid you good night, if you don't mind. Not With this, he heads upstairs to presumably the bedrooms and uh, disappears from view. Well, that was an experience, wasn't it? Some may notice that uh, the fiery crackle in uh, Izar's eyes has dwindled quite a bit after all of the events and information from the day. <laughs> Seems like we're all a bit burnt out. Good sleep should do us well. Agreed. Try so I assume you're gonna, you, yeah, you, you find the the elderly barkeep. He goes, "Oh yes, uh, how many rooms for you? Five? Hi. We're Good not possible. too busy. Five rooms is fine. That'll simply be ten silver for the night, and uh, with all of your drinks and food." Should amount to about 14 silver. I got you, fam. Oh. Hurry. Dude, him, Dermak has no food. money. <laughs> he handed him 14 silver and he goes, here we go. And uh, he places down five very simple looking wrought iron keys. They all have a attached tag by loop, just with a number on. And you have the numbers two through seven, presumably next to uh, Ronaldo's room. I'll be well, six rooms. Two through six. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything to say before I hit the hail? Well, just 
Just reconvene in the morning and uh, figure out where we're going from there, I guess. Yeah, what, we gotta... I, actually, I have one idea. Mm -hmm. Before we... Before you all bed down, I maybe tie a piece of string across your doorway or something in the way so that if someone does enter your room at night, you will know. Especially you, Eddie, if someone tries to come in and steal the flail. Did the doors open inward or outward? Are you asking the barkeep? I mean, I mean, I could be. It, I technically, I could look as well, but uh, at this point, he, he just he seems to think for a second to go. Um, out outward. Can, if you're can in the room, it opens simply up. Simply lock the doors. Yeah, I mean, we can lock the doors. Uh, they, could, also, they could also pick the lock. I'm this also going to tie a rope uh, to my bed and the handle. <laughs> you're going to tie yourself down for the night? <laughs> yep. God. The Wait, door's sorry, not Justin. Please, please clarify. How are you tying yourself up for your inevitable nighttime assassination? <laughs> I, no, okay. I so, definitely so, so, volunteer to help no, no, no. tie her okay. down to the. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not being tied. All right. So, so we have the door. The door opens out. Right. Okay. So I'm going to attach the rope to the handle of the door, right. and then I'm going to right. run that taut to the to bed. The bed yeah. And I'm going to be on the bed. So either I'm possibly, I, I mean, I doubt I'm going to be too heavy for dwarves. I'm a tiny little tiefling boy. So you're um, going to get slightly dragged across the floor if they yes. open the door. But I'll wake up. That's the point. I'll wake up, though. That's the yeah, point. Just... <laughs> I'll know. Would, would you wake up if your bed slightly moved? Depends. Uh, I, I, like I in, in real life, I wouldn't. I sleep heavy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Justin, go get your bed and we'll test it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very well. So you all make your way up to your rooms. Justin ties himself up or something. Uh, <laughs> what are the rest of you lock. doing? Yeah, I would uh, I'd lock the door and yeah, I'd rope across you know, the bottom like foot so that if someone were okay. to inconspicuously not know, they'd maybe fall. <laughs> very well. Anybody else taking rope-based precautions? <laughs> I'm 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 locking the door and I'll put one of like the the chairs that are inside like on near the door. So like actually a smart idea. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. Fletch, anything? <laughs> uh, I, I I mean I was just gonna tie a piece of string between the door handle and the the opening of the door so that if it, the, it gets split if it if it does open. Okay. I'll just lock my door. And then before I go to bed, I'm Thank gonna... you so much for just locking your door. <laughs> lock I was going to do that anyway. But... Dorothea um... doesn't wake up. She dies. Yeah, Apparently. Right. She's uh, gone missing. I don't know. Before I head to bed, I'm just going to take out a map and scribble a few notes down, like marking our journey where we kind of saw the, the dead guy. And you know, there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of other scribbles and everything on it. Lots of notes. Okay. All right. So you all bed down for the night. And... Slowly sleep falls over each one of you. At which point, a few hours into sleeping. Oh god. Eddie, no do surname, it. the let's, wizard. Let's I would fucking like you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to make me a perception check. Percep perception. perception. I'd like you to make me a perception check. With disadvantage because you're asleep, asleep. and you're lucky I'm letting you do one. I have I got a five. I am. Okay, well I'm gonna roll something, but it I think this is a fairly foregone conclusion. Just roll two net ones like I did. It's fine. All right, but... Why didn't we do that thing they do in Lord of the Rings? Stay in the other inn. <laughs> why, why, didn't, why didn't we? John, you wake like up to a ring wraith together. above you. Ah, well, all right. Pull in a room. Camping so, John, over. you do not stir from your sleep, at least not initially, until you feel a cold metallic tip being pushed into your neck. You're dead. No, you feel a prick of oh, blood <laughs> well oh up God. on your neck as you awaken in bed and you look up to see the rot-toothed grin of this grizzled, ginger-bearded Duragar, his skin ashen gray and bright red eyes looking at you while another Duragar in the room helmeted but with the same foul, just stained and wretched ginger beard taking the flail out of your pack and, well, would you like to do anything, first of all? I mean, I'm at knife point. <laughs> There's not a whole lot I can do. <laughs> Smart boy. All right, so the one holding the knife to your throat goes, Try anything. Please do. We've been told to be subtle, but I love an excuse. I do nothing. Okay. 
So the dwarf picks the, the Chardolin flail out of your bag and starts backing towards the door looking at you. The one at knife point starts backing away as well. And all of a sudden, they both shrink down to a tiny size. They shrink, they specifically. They shrink, yes. And run under a gap nice. between the door and the floor. Nice. Little fuckers. After which, <laughs> you hear crashing down the stairs and the front door of the inn, it sounds like it was kicked open. And then you hear footsteps in the snow out the window outside. What would you like to do? Oh, holy Subtle. shit. I'd like to uh, get out of bed. Basically run out the door. Right. Yell, get up! <laughs> as loud as I possibly can. And try and see if I can at least see the tracks or see them running off, so to speak. Okay, so as you make it down the stairs, you, you are delayed a little bit behind these guys. You nearly trip over the rope that's on the door Classic. in your hurry. <laughs> and die. <laughs> you make it out the front door. You can't see anything. But what you can see is two quickly growing trails of footsteps that seem to be leading their ways towards the docks. And just at this point, everybody else, you were roused from your slumber and you all sort of come tumbling down the stairs to behind John, watching this ever-growing trail of footsteps. They got the mace, or the flail. I was attacked. Are you okay? No. <laughs> I mean, who, yes, who I, got it? I think uh, I'm okay, but... I will, I will, dear gods. I will mend your wound or something. Oh, it's, it's just a tiny little... Okay. Right. It's like, it's like, like bleeding profusely. I, they, didn't, they didn't cut his throat and then talk to him. That would be pretty to, brutal. To try and okay. keep things brief, I read count what I Sure, you, you explain what just <laughs> happened to the party, yeah. And I see footprints running off into the snow. We, what do we do? Do we chase Fo them? Follow them, of I course. Would, well, I, I would point out to you all at this point, you are not dressed for combat. You guys are not in your gear. You've just and ran out of bed. Unless you're course. sleeping in armor, you are not out. You're not in combat. Who game. needs armor? <laughs> yeah, you could. You could go no armor. That's the plan. Uh, uh no. If they mm. look, dude. If they just wanted the. Uh, the flail, like we can deal with that some other time. I want. I need my beauty sleep. Oh, it's. I... I just expect them to come back. But for why? They would got what they wanted. Yeah, we'll kill them some other time. It's fine. We can, I we can... I feel like we should chase them. Well, let's go get our stuff before we do so, because I don't want to go out in the cold and just. Man... What do I wear? I don't know. My pajamas. <laughs> pajamas. <laughs> Jammies. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I I think we should go after them as well. All right, let's get our shit. All right, let's, let's get... Uh, I guess Wake up, Isa. Uh, yeah, all right, whatever. I'm going to go get them. As you, are, as you are looking, I will say that the, the track stopped growing when they rounded the corner at the end of the road, turning right. So they ran up this direction, essentially. So you're here, and uh, they went... Where's my paintbrush? There it is. They went this way, and you lost sight of them there. So they ran to the end of the road, turned right towards the docks. And as you all, all, all go to get ready, I think that's a natural place to end the session for today. Well, I'll use the dash action. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're such idiots. Like, we were told that they're coming. We could have done that so much better. You know, it's funny. When he said five rooms, I was like, I guess, okay, whatever. I, I, just, I was like, yeah, I does just anyone want to be I was like, nope, like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to be difficult to the to the barman and be like, actually, we'll have one room, please, for all five of us. <laughs> so, yeah. Goodbye, flail. Goodbye, dignity. Hello, <laughs> chasing after people in your pajamas in the snow. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for playing. It's an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you, everybody at home as well, for watching as well. We'll be back in two weeks' time where the party will go outside with more clothes on and hopefully the dwarves will be less invisible. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>